Hey everyone. Sorry I couldn't be at NCA this year, but I hope you're having a great conference and I thought I would just uh, send a video of the presentation. Um, so this, this, these thoughts uh, are written also with Carlina De Russo. She's a doctoral student at Penn State. So basically I'm interested in the boundary conditions of research on inspiring media. And so um, here's basically what we've been studying over the last several years, the idea that exposure to inspiring messages can elicit feelings of elevation, and those feelings of elevation lead to prosocial outcomes like altruism or connectedness with humanity. Um, what I want to do here <clears throat> is to try to problematize this general model and so share with you some thoughts that uh, I've been I've been dwelling on quite a bit lately and so how I would like to proceed with some research in this area. So one question is who's seeing inspiring messages and usually we're doing experimental work so we randomly assign people to that um, but of course outside the lab that's not really so much the case so when you look at the kind of predictors of who's selecting to view inspiring media, you see things like empathic traits or tendency to be engaged with moral beauty. And so what this means is that one question that I think we need to be thinking about is, are we really just preaching to the choir when we're studying inspiring media? Who's watching it out there in the real world, so to say? Related to this is <clears throat> even if someone is exposed to a media message, either willingly or unwillingly in the lab, does that always lead to um, feeling inspired or does it lead to affective uh, elevation? The answer to that, I think, is that it's a moderated relationship and there are lots of different traits that might moderate this or also lots of different aspects about messages affective states, etc., that, that might play a role here. But for example, um, I've been doing some work with um, Marcus Appel and Mike Slater. We have a, a paper in press where we were looking at aspects of the dark triad and how that um, was related to seeing uh, inspiring videos as kind of corny. And so you can see that um, the dashed line is a eudaimonic or a meaningful or inspiring video and the solid line is, is a control video and that higher levels of Machiavellianism, just one aspect of the dark triad, were associated with seeing the videos as increasingly corny um, or inauthentic. Um, I, I've been particularly interested lately in looking at additional moderators here and the one I've been interested in thinking about is uh, political ideology. Um, so I'll give you an example of what I, what I mean by this. So a lot of you might have seen uh, Beto O'Rourke who was asked a question during one of his talks about how he felt uh, about the uh, players in the NFL taking a knee. And he went on to say he doesn't think that's un-American at all. And I, like many people, found that um, his his talk particularly inspiring and you can look at user comments and you see all sorts of indicators that people were feeling inspired it brought tears to my eyes my eyes watered so bad this is incredible wow inspiration but if you look at additional comments as you can imagine there were people who really didn't find it so inspiring that saying hey, this is after this election you can take a knee you open border wanker, um, you can start campaigning in, in, in Venezuela now, you know, I can think of nothing more American, I can think of nothing more American than disrespecting the flag and the anthem they're, tra they're translating um, what they think Beto was saying. So um, I, well, this leads me to a, a next question is, can inspiring for some people be disgusting for others? And how can we go about um, predicting those kinds of responses? Another question that I have is, does feeling moved or feeling touched preclude other responses that people might feel simultaneously? And so 
when we've been measuring elevation, uh, we've we've noted that there are all additional. It's a complex uh, emotion, and things like sadness or hope might be right there. So I've kind of made affective elevation a latent variable here to try to illustrate that. But I also wonder if there are additional responses that may be out there that we just haven't assessed yet. So for example, anger or, or, or even moral outrage. Um, so I, the third question is what other feelings might accompany affective elevation? Um, and the last uh, thing that I'll mention here is does inspiration or effective elevation necessarily lead to self-transcendent outcomes? So I've mentioned that one of the outcomes that we've studied a lot is the feeling of being connected with humanity, that seeing that despite our diversity that we share often um, very uh, sim similar values, uh, love for family, for example. Um, but I also wonder if sometimes elevation might lead to greater connection, not with humanity, but uh, with the in-group in particular. Um, so as an example, I'll, I'll show you here. This was a, <clears throat> a, a video that got a whole lot of play about a year ago, and it was this, um, this team, I believe they were in Georgia, football team and they ran onto the field and they were all um, carrying the American flag. They happened to be playing um, uh, Dixie. The band was playing Dixie. And um, so anyway, if you look at that, <clears throat> you can see that there were a lot of people who expressed elevation in response to that. Just classic sort of indicators, goosebumps, crying, I'm so proud, it brought tears to my eyes, etc. So, you know, that certainly is inspiring for some people, but the question is, does that translate into connection with humanity? And you could imagine that while people were expressing feeling inspired, there was also a simultaneous expression of adherence to the in-group or the political in-group um, uh, in particular. So um, the last question is, does inspiration always lead to connectedness with all others or with the in-group in particular? So those are some of the thoughts that I've been having lately. Um, so that's the basic model, but there are lots of questions that really, I think, need our attention here. Uh, I, I'm a, I really do continue to believe in the utility and the hope that inspiring media may play a positive outcome for us. And I'm very interested in, in, in working on how to harness that, but at the same time, I also think that unless we really start to grapple with some of these questions that we'll be missing the big picture um, and it won't be as productive as it can be. So I'm committed to working and forging ahead in this direction and I hope you found these comments helpful. Um, I want to thank you uh, and apologize again that I'm not there. But if you have any comments or any suggestions, any reactions, I'd be super happy to hear them. And again, thanks a lot, and I hope you have a great conference. Bye.